Today's video is brought to you by my August patrons. They're the ones that help me make stuff. Hey guys, in today's video is my August monthly update video for my comic that I'm currently working on. And I'd like to touch bases with you guys and to share a little bit about the process of what I'm doing and, and kind of the things that I'm learning about. Last month I talked a little bit about character design, but what is the overall process of making a comic? Well, first it starts with an idea, a story that you wanna share. Once you come up with that story idea, then it's character design designing those characters that are going to be telling or taking the viewer on this adventure. And I might do a video where I talk a little bit more about character development later on. The next step is storyboarding where you're kind of blocking out the pacing for how you want to tell the story. And there is a lot to talk about in storyboarding and that will be its entirely own separate video. But let's say that you've gotten this far. You have the story, you have your characters, you've kind of even blocked out how you want the page to look. How do you get from the storyboard, the really rough, raw image, to a finished, polished image? There are several different things to think about. One is ultimately you want to know what are your goals? What are you planning to do with this project? Do you want to publish it digitally, like online? Like there are a lot of websites out there. You can upload your comics for free. People can come and view them. Or you might want to actually get it printed as a physical copy that you can sell or give out. All of those options, you will need to do a little research. Some companies want them in certain formats, others want them in this way, some are this size, some are like, whatever you wanna do, we'll do it. But certain ways of doing them are a little bit cheaper than other ways. So research is a big vital part. My ultimate goal is, is to self-publish. I decided not to try to go with a publishing company because cutting out the middleman. So my two options were to self-print or to third or to hire a third-party company. To self-publish would take a lot of time and effort and energy and to get it the quality that I want would require equipment that I don't have. So my choice is to go through a third-party printing company and there's a lot of them out there. If you guys are interested, I will do a video more on that when I get to that stage of the process. I chose a company that I knew a lot of other comic book artists use to third party print and I went to their kind of setup page and they gave me a template where I know exactly what size I need to make my comic book to be, what DPI or dots per inch, um, all the formats and what's going to work best with their technology, with their equipment. So for those of you who are wondering, I am doing my comic book as a seven by 10 and a half inch at 300 DPI. Um, a lot of artists do higher DPI, but this company says you could do a thousand DPI and it's gonna be printed at the same quality that a 300 DPI is, which is still a really nice quality. Once I have the size that I want of my comic and I have the storyboards, now it's time to polish and get each page to look exactly the way I want it. And this requires quite a few drafts. So a draft is a, an attempt at a page and, and you look at that and then you think of ways that you can make it better and you, and you do it again. And sometimes it takes one draft, two drafts. Sometimes I finish the entire page and I move on and I'm like three or four pages down and I go back and look and I'm, something about it is not working with me so I have to go back and re redraw it and fix it. There is a, a fine balance at this point between not rushing your work, doing the very best that you can do, and stalling out and just staying stuck, which is where I was. And a lot of artists I talk to have that same problem. We're, I don't know, perfectionists. We want our work to be just right, or maybe it's the, the fear of moving on and, and, and failing, because now it's, it's doing art for myself is one thing, but doing art that I'm going to then publish and, and hopefully people will want to enjoy, I, there's, a, there's this fear. So I don't know, maybe you have the same problem. If you do, let me know in the comments. I had a hard time pushing past that point. I think this has been a running theme with this entire project even years and years and years ago when I had the idea of doing this comic. That's why I started my Patreon because then I had a little accountability. I had people that were not just cheering me on but financially backing my project and wanting to see me progress and succeed. And so that adds a little bit more of, of a reason for me to go ahead and just give it all I've got but m keep moving forward. Never, never stopping, never giving up, never putting it to the back burner. So you have to find that balance. About two years ago, I had started this this actual story. I was wanting to do it in time for Mermaid. I began 
working on it in January of that year and realized very quickly that it takes a lot longer to do a comic than just like three or four months. I thought, I, three or four months, I can do a comic in that time. Um, a short comic, sure, but this is a little bit longer of a comic. And I found that, that to try to meet the goals that I had, I was having to really rush through art. So as I look back on those pages, I kind of cringe at them because I know that they weren't the best that I could do. Now, let me clarify. Every single artist should look back on artwork from five years ago, 10 years ago, two weeks ago, and hopefully you're seeing where you have improved. Improvement is not the same as being a lazy artist and not doing the best that you could do at that time. And that's what I found I was doing. Like the eyes weren't symmetrical, the, the anatomy was sloppy, and I know it wasn't skill because there were some pictures that were beautifully done. I, they clicked, but then other ones I just didn't take the time to go and work at and, and try to figure out and push myself to do the very best. I was more worried about my deadlines. So working with a project, it's good to have a deadline, but have realistic deadlines. Don't make a deadline that's going to be detrimental to your end product. Don't try to do a huge project in something that would take months and try to do it in a week and expect to have the quality that you could do in months. But then the balancing point is how do you then not get stuck on one page? How do you move forward if it's just not looking the way you want? I wanna share with you three tips that I've been using a lot these last two months to help me continue to move forward. So when I get a, a picture or a post, like this pose that I'm working on right now, that I'm struggling with, it's the anatomy is really tricky, overall page has a, has a big emotional feel to it and I wanna convey that, maybe I'm not getting it. And you'll see as I'm speeding through this that you'll see I do a lot of changes. So one thing you'll see maybe, because it's going really fast, is I will flip my work. Digitally, this is really easy. I have it set up on a hot key, so I push the key and it just mirrors the image. Sometimes taking and flipping an image around, you can see it fresh and your eyes will catch where there might be a mistake, where you're, you're seeing something's off but you can't tell what it is. When you flip it, you go, oh, the eyes aren't focused or that hand is really big or that shoulder is really not proportionally correct to how it should be anatomy. You will see those mistakes, so flipping your work. If you're doing it traditionally, you can hold it up in a mirror, you can hold it up to the light and look at it from the backside. There's lots of ways you can do that. Step number two, if it's still not working, go back to the storyboard. Don't, don't erase your work, just put that page aside. Go back to the storyboard and try a different layout, a different angle. Um, come at your drawing from a different way. So for this drawing, I have four back panels and one overlaying panel. And in this piece, I really wanna convey the feeling of deep water and kind of an eerie feeling. So the main character we've just realized does not know how to swim very well. And he's in some pretty deep ocean water. And I wanted to convey that, but with these panels and the overlaying panel, I wanted to have the character or the drawing be able to lead the viewer's eyes through the panels. So the beginning of this, I had the main character of this page, Finn, his hand was grasping out towards the left side of the page. And in the right side of the page, I was gonna have three panels, one panel with Finn's hand reaching up towards the, you know, the surface of the water. And then the second panel was Finn's hand with uh, May, the mermaid's hand, reaching to grab him. But what happened, is there was just a lot of hands in that drawing. In the overall panel, there was like tons of hands, too many hands on deck. So I flipped Finn's position on the overlay panel. So then his hand was gesturing towards the panel of the surface of the water. And I just didn't draw his hand in that panel. So the overlay panel was able to gesture that into that. So by changing the layout or the way I look at things really helped to fix some of the issues that I was having. The third tip, and you'll see I did this several times with, with these drawings, especially with the one of Finn in the middle, is I will redraw it several times until I get the line sweep or motion or, or feel that I like. With digital art, it can be really easy. You can just hide a layer and then bring in a fresh new layer and redraw it. And just starting fresh and not having to erase things, taking a deep breath, sometimes getting a fresh start at that sketch can really be a big, big help. And also know that you don't have to work on a piece from start to finish. Like 
on this page, I don't start at panel number one and go one, two, three, four, five. I jump all around, so I work a little bit on this panel. Actually, the first panel was an image that I wanted to express the deep water feel, but I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to portray that, so I do that. I think that's one of the last panels that I work on. So, you know, if one panel's giving you a little heart, heartache, move to the next panel. If the whole page is giving you a little bit of trouble, go work on page number two. Go work on the, work on a third page or a fourth page and then come back to this one. As long as your storyboard is pretty solid and you know that you're not going to add a new character or you know a whole bunch of more dialogue from this point to that point in the story is going to be conveyed on that page then it doesn't matter what page you're working on. You don't have to work on them in order so just keep moving. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep drawing, drawing, drawing. What do we do? We draw, draw, draw. Anyway guys, I hope this gave you some encouragement if you have a huge project that you're working on. I know this has been a huge learning thing for me. I love it. I love every single chance I get to work on this comic book project and I really feel that it's actually starting to come together as something that is tangible, that is going to take a physical book form at one point and not just be something that's stuck in my mind and I, a huge thanks goes out to my patrons who are not just supporting me um, with monthly pledges but also just the comments and the conversations that we have back and forth so if you would like to be part of this adventure with me and want some want more behind the scenes um, information seeing things as they are progressing help, helping me make decisions on the comment I will leave a link to my patreon page there are several different tiers levels de depending on the amount of information and behind the scenes that you want from whether you just want like one or two updates a week or you want to see every single little bit of the art as it's being made so check that out Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in this video and for watching my videos here on YouTube. If you're brand new to my channel, you can hit that subscribe button and that way you don't miss out on any future videos that are coming up. And as always, God bless you guys. Keep being creative, encouraging one another, and we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye.